Hey everyone, Mike Zuber again, and I have a great show for you. Uh, I have another real estate entrepreneur from the East Coast who's going to be dropping some knowledge bombs on us. And uh, please welcome Modesta Heredia to the show. How are you doing this morning, Modesta? I'm great. How are you? Uh, I'm doing very, very well. Frankly, any friends of April's is a friend of mine, so uh, I'm, I'm glad to have you. Why don't you share with us uh, where you are, what you do, and, and, and what part of the country you're in? Sure. Um, so, um, so like Mike said, we, uh, I am in the East Coast, Pennsylvania, um, and I am an entrepreneur, real estate entrepreneur, right? Um, I wholesale, I have a couple of rentals, and I have flipped in the past, but primarily, I guess, I'm focused on wholesaling and buying homes. I really like this term I'm hearing more and more, real estate entrepreneur. What, what does that mean to you? <sighs> it means that... Right. And, and, and I will say this, so I don't discriminate, right? There's so much that you can do in real estate. It's, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yes, like I said, I primarily focus on wholesaling and buy and hold, but as an entrepreneur, there's just so much opportunity out there in real estate that you can kind of get into different things and, 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 and still, you know, still concentrate on real estate, but it's just different avenues. Yeah. And I think that's right. I think, I think a true real estate entrepreneur they have this funnel, right? Life's a funnel, right? You above the funnel, you have leads. And on the other side, you have outcomes, typically cash, some kind of result of a sale or an option or something. But it's how you treat everything in the middle of that, that makes you an entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I like that whole don't don't discriminate, right? You if, you if you can find a way to, you know, a help someone and B put a couple of you know dollars in your pocket, you know, you shouldn't be typecast. I think I think that's the right way to go. Uh, but let's, let's flip that coin over because a lot of people that watch this show are new. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I preach is when you're starting, go get focused, right? Try to figure one thing out because if you, if you chase shiny objects, you may feel like you're doing something, but you're not moving. Would you agree? I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. Um, there's just, like I said, there's so much out there mm -hmm. and it's so easy to kind of, uh, watch someone speak and say, Oh my God, they're so successful in that Avenue. I want to do that too. And mm -hmm. I want to do this and I want to do that, but I would absolutely agree. Focus, get really good at one thing and then move on to something else. Yeah, totally agree. So let's, let's talk about your story. Where, where did you start? You know, I think it was four years ago you were saying. Yeah. Yes. Uh, 2015. So during the time, my husband and I were actually looking to buy our first home. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, um, I was actually reading rich dad, poor dad. Mm. But also, um, yeah, right. Great book. Yes. Uh, and, um, but also during that time, my job was actually going through this like phase where they were letting go of like all of these salary, salary positions. It was like, I want to say over a hundred people. Mm -hmm. and so it was one of those things where I would never forget walking through, I was going to a meeting and I was looking in offices and everyone was just sitting at their, at their desk, waiting for the call, oh. stating that they had to go home. And I was blessed that I still had a job, but I came home and I told my husband, I'm like, we need to, you know, we need to have another Avenue. Like at the end of the day, like, yes, I still work full time. Um, but you know, I can get Lego at any time. Like I do a great job at my job, but it's ultimately it's, it's, we need another Avenue. Yeah. So that, um, I, we called our realtor and we just said, Hey, is there any multi units that we can kind of live in one unit and rent the other? So then we kind of change avenues pretty quickly. And he was, it was, you know, on board and that's how we, we started off. We rented a unit and then lived in the other. So you bought a duplex house hacked or whatever you want to call that. Okay. Very cool. Well, I want to scratch this need for a plan B and frankly, I've already found your title for your video. It's going to be need a plan B. Cause I think, yeah. I think we're in an environment today. In fact, I, I published an article on my Facebook page talking about unemployment lowest it's been in since 69. It might've been 59. I think it was 69, whatever it was. Wow. But the, the flip side of that is the business cycle is real. And yes, could, could unemployment go lower? Sure. But I promise you it won't be sub 4% forever. Mm -hmm. So when you're looking at this and, and, and the times are good, um, you know, I'm reminded of that child story. Wasn't there a children's story that talked about the grasshopper and the ant? And, you know, when times were good, you know, the ant would stash food away, but the grasshopper would play and then winter came and the grasshopper starved and the ant was fine. Something like that. I, I seem yeah, to remember yeah. that. But, you know, we need to remember that. And you talked about it, right? That is a plan B, right? When the times are good, 
don't go do stupid things. Save, invest, repeat, right? Would you agree? I absolutely agree. Yeah, you never know about tomorrow. So yeah. you have to be prepared. Yeah, and the other thing you talked about, and you didn't say it, but it, it was right there, is you sacrificed, right? You probably didn't have a vision of living next to one of your tenants, right? Yeah. That wasn't like the dream of all dreams. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you were in a situation, I just could, I can imagine, right, walking down a hallway, looking to your left or right, going, oh, man, you know, Susie's going to go, and Mark's going to go, and, you know, Raj is going to go, and you know, all of that. And, you know, you know, you had really two choices. You could have taken that and, and created a plan B or been egotistical and said, nope, I'm, you know, no, no nothing on me. I'm good. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So you buy this duplex, you, you, uh, you hold on to the plan B concept. Where does it go from there? So uh, we ended up living there for about a year. Um, and it, it was the first, first time being landlords. So mm -hmm. we made a lot of mistakes. Um, <laughs> it happens. All, yeah, exactly. They're all good mistakes. I mean, I would say that that first year was very testing for my husband and myself. We, we ended up evicting people. Oh yeah. Um, we had a bed bug like outbreak. It was, it was one of those things where I, I felt like God was just putting everything in my way to see if I was strong enough to see if we were strong enough to make it. I remember telling my husband, I'm like, I don't know if this is for us. Like, I don't know if we can do this. Um, yeah. But we got through it and then we ended up um, purchasing our home. And then now we have that two unit. Um, and then we've just kind of been repeating from there. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's, again, you're just dropping some great things here that I preach all the time. I truly believe real estate investing tests you on purpose, whether it's God or something else. It tests you because the rewards are so great on the other side. It only wants to let people through that are willing to get through it, right? I cannot imagine evicting your neighbors, right? That's, yeah. you had to do that. And then, oh, by the way, they bring bed bugs, which could potentially get to your unit. And, mm -hmm. oh, I mean, you know, that, that's, that stuff's real, people. This, this, being a landlord's hard, right? Bad stuff happens. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. It, it was definitely a learning experience, but we are so much better off now. Like we know so much, you know, mm -hmm. we've changed our whole concept and, and we started, you know, attending the real estate meetings, which April holds here in Berks County. And that's where I met her. Um, and from there, you just meet so many people who have been doing this for years. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, we're going through this. And they're like, yeah, we've been through that. Yeah, and they're check. Like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. And what about this? Oh, okay, well, we went through that a couple of years ago. And I'm like, oh, okay. So people are going, getting through this and they're yeah. actually successful. And, you know, so that kind of gives you hope and says, okay, you know, I can do it too. Yeah. Again, this whole real estate testing you, the, one of the things I would preach to new investors, this is, this is for investors that have something, right? Not the ones that are stuck on zero, but like you have one, two, three, four units is you have to, I don't know if it's called moderate your ups and downs, right? Because if you let, if you let the whole heart attack, whatever that's called, you're going to, you're, it's going to end badly because that, that kind of yeah. swings in good and bad days takes a lot of toll on you. Uh, and frankly, I learned that in sales, right? We run in 90 day cycles and you know, you have your good days and bad days. And same thing with real estate. You can't, you can't let the business of real estate destroy your day or your family. You just like you like you talked about networking, right? Oh yeah, we've been there. Check, right? That's when you know you got an experienced landlord. Oh yeah. Yeah. Been there. Right. It, it gets better. <laughs> yeah. Once a year. Easy. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's pretty funny um yeah. so okay so you start with a couple of rentals uh when do you kind of switch gears and start going after what i call chunk money which would be either flipping or wholesaling when, when does that kind of enter your realm of uh experience yeah so i i don't get into anything without stunning so i i kind of like started just reading books you know bigger pockets and and talking to people so we actually ended up flipping a house. It was off of another wholesaler. Um, so that was our first, our first. Um, and so, so, honestly, so let's, let's, like, let's stay, let's give them the numbers. So a wholesaler brings you a house at X. What, what's the X roughly like 50 grand, was, 40 grand, hundred grand. 40. Okay. So they bring you a house. That's like a house house, right? Like yep. 1500 square house. feet, mm -hmm. quarter acre lot kind of thing. Okay. Yep, yep. So you see this Beautiful. it's 40 grand. And you go, we, honey, we could do something with this. Did you have to go get a loan? Did you stroke a check? How, how did that work? Yeah. So um, I had, you know, resources. So I'm, I'm, I kind of sent out an email, spoke to a couple people, and I was able to get someone to lend me okay. the full price and the rehab. And ah, wow. So yeah. you had, 
100% of all costs, at least the known cost covered, right? Purchase price, closing cost, and repair. Yes. Okay. All right. So you, so you get into this and uh, let's talk. I mean, you know, flips have their own surprises. Anything jump yeah. out at you? <laughs> um, yeah, we definitely uh, underestimated the budget. Okay. Um, so towards the end, uh, my husband and I had to do a couple of things ourselves. Sure. Um, we also, the furnace, uh, we were told uh, by the contractor that um, it, it was okay to, to kind of sell as is. But thinking back to it now, yes, we could have left it as is, which we did. But we probably should have uh, fixed that because that kind of ended up, um, although our property was on the market for like a week and we accepted an offer, but it was lower than what mm -hmm. we had originally. So we didn't make as much as we thought we were going to make. Um, but at the end of the day, the experience and yeah. jumping into it and actually doing it, that beat everything else, you know? Yeah. You got another skill set, right? You put, you already had your landlord tool belt on, you had your house hacking tool belt on. Now you have a flip tool belt and you have private money, right? You're, you're just adding more things to your real estate entrepreneur skill set, which is pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. What was the timeline sort of you close to you sell? Is it 90 days, six months? What was that? Yeah, it was actually four months. My realtor was kind ah, of surprised. He there was you like, go. wow. But I, I, my contractor was great. Like we, we, we talked on a daily basis and actually I got really lucky. This property was actually right in front of my house. Ah. <laughs> so we were literally like there every single day, you know, uh, talking to the contractors and stuff. So uh, we have four months. Yeah. From so the time lo the location matters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I guess that's one thing I missed uh, on your rentals. Are they all driving distance or you go out of state or what does that look like? Driving distance. Driving distance. And you, do you yeah. self-manage or pay someone? Self-manage. Well, oh. I should say my husband manages. To... Uh, well, that's self-manage. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, the tenant yeah. needs you. Yeah, I get you. I get you. Very, very cool. All right. So uh, we're walking down this journey together. When does wholesaling into your tool belt? Wholesaling was actually. Um, I had a friend contact me about a property. Mm -hmm. um, so I had, I had, I was starting. So I was kind of like marketing and trying to get deals and everything was falling through. Mm. Um, whether, you know, I made a mistake of posting uh, a property on Facebook and someone knew the person and this whole dilemma happened where they actually went and told the person that I was trying to, to sell the property for a higher profit. So that kind of ended up, you know, going yeah. down the drain. You know, you live and you learn. So it was one of those things where it was like, I think I had like three properties under contract that fell through. Um, and so uh, a friend came to me and said, hey, you know, my um, a family member of mine wants to get rid of a property, blah, blah, blah. So then what I ended up doing was actually contacting a local investor that I knew wholesaled and said, mm -hmm. hey, do you mind if we if we JV on this, like, if, mm -hmm. can you guide me through it? And if you have a buyer, you know, we can work together. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how that started because after that, I kind of just started working with him for all of my deals. Like we just kind of worked together. Um, and so I would bring him the properties market, actually go put properties on a contract and then he had buyers. So we would JV on, on properties. Very cool. So again, you're adding tools to, to your tool belt, right? You're, you're adding marketing and collecting leads. Uh, you're building your network. People are bringing you transactions. And then you JV again. I mean, there's, I mean, you're doing everything uh, along this way. Um, any surprises in any of that, that you, you know, sort of lessons learned that you'd want others to uh, learn oh, from? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I always, I always tell my husband, I'm like, why can't it just go like this? Like a straight line from the beginning to the end. It never, never I've, yet, I've yet to go through a deal where it's been like, we get it under contract, get a buyer, sell it. And that's it. There's yeah. always something there's liens that pop up. The, the, uh, the seller may have to come uh, to closing with, with the check because of the liens and stuff. So there's uh -huh. things that pop up. Um, and I always just tell local investors that contact me, I'm like, don't give up. Like they'll come to me and say, Hey, I have this property under contract and, and I don't know, you know, how to move it. Um, so definitely don't give up and also JV as much as possible, especially in the beginning. And even now, like, I, I wouldn't consider myself experienced because I feel like I'm still learning. But even now, if I were to have a property under contract and another wholesaler says, hey, you know, I have a buyer, I don't mind splitting costs and saying, hey, let's do this together. Like, I don't mind that at all. It's, it's, I think it's, it's more of just building relationships. And I, and I know I've, I've actually um, posted about that before. And a lot of people responded back saying, well, you know, we get investors that aren't, that don't want to help or or want to charge and blah, blah, blah. I get that. I understand that there's people yeah. in this world kind of just want to do that, you know, 
but there are good people out there that will yeah. help you. Yeah, I, I think that's, uh, that's an important point. Um, a, you got to network and grow because what people really, again, I say this all the time, probably in half my videos, uh, real estate investing is a people business, right? It's not about the house, not about the Excel spreadsheet. It's about how many relationships and how many people know you uh, that, you know, and then deals, you, it's like you become a magnet. The more people you know, the bigger magnet you are. Um, yeah. And then, you know, where that goes is if you are someone that kind of sucks all the oxygen out of the room or all the dollars out of a deal, you are quickly going to be expelled from that growing network. Um, yes. So, you know, the more you can JV and be fair and, and, and as equal as possible. I've lived my life by the whole 5149 rule, right? I'm willing to give up 51% to get the 49, you know, generically speaking, right? I'm willing to give just a little bit more, um, you know, but if someone comes in and wants 75% or 80% of it, you know, they're, they're off the list and I'll never, I won't deal with them again. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, which I want to applaud you for because you're setting up a business that's going to be able to outlast any business cycle, right? Because of these relationships. I am very nervous for most people in your shoes. If you started in the last five years, you have known nothing but good times, right? You're to go back to that analogy of the grasshopper and the ant. That's the good times. Mm -hmm. I fear the good times won't last forever. And half of the, half of the people we quote unquote compete with are going to yeah. disappear in 24 months. Okay. Because they're going to, they're going to be bankrupt. They're going to run out of cash. They're going to burn every bridge. They're going to try to, they're going to try to squeeze extra juice out of the deal one more time. Cause they haven't had a deal in three weeks. Mm -hmm. Just let it happen. It'll, they'll just, they'll just fall apart. And I say this from experience, right? I, I, I started in Oh three. So I mm -hmm. saw this five year run, six year run before. And I saw, I saw people worth 10 million bucks go bankrupt inside of nine months. Because, yeah. they, because they didn't take a small loss, they held too much inventory, they got greedy, and they had no friends because they, they were jerks. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's coming. So, so keep doing what you're doing uh, and let the business cycle help you and your reputation and your ability to JV and partner will, will certainly help you. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I am curious. So let's, yeah. let's uh, you know, I don't know, be uh, Marty McFly or put a time machine on. Let's look out five years. What's different in your, your husband and your world in five years? What do you think? Um, I would hope that, well, let's not say hope. Like I'm going to speak it to existence. There you I go. Would, I would, um, I'm planning to be in real estate full time. So, right. Like I said before, I, I do work, work full time. So yep. real estate's like a part time, but it's more of a full time job too. Right. Yeah. So I plan to, to be in it full time and, and to just continue to, you know, build relationships and, and have more rentals. Um, I have a goal. I have this crazy goal and mm. I don't even know where I got the goal from. I think it's just because it's a number, but a hundred rentals, you know, uh, or doors, I guess you can say. Yeah. So doors. Yeah. yeah. Doors. Yeah. So I have, a, you know, a hundred doors, um, and flip two, three properties a year, yeah. um, uh, and the wholesale. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. And, and, um, it took us, my wife and I, I'm going to be, try to be accurate. I think nine years to get to a hundred. So it's absolutely okay. possible. Um, you know, we exited uh, full-time employment. She exited a little earlier than I did, but we got to 175. So it's absolutely nice. possible. I know it seems yeah. like a big number. I know it seems like we're leading over our skis, uh, but you can yeah. absolutely get there, right? This, 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 yeah. The business of real estate is not like sports or other things that have age limits, right? You can do this literally until you die. Um, yep. so, so just keep moving forward, keep being, keep being who you are. Do you think you'll still just be geographically centered, you know, kind of around your house, like a half hour from your house or an hour from your house, or what do you think? Um, I, think the, I think the option of, of going out a little bit is always, is always on the table. Or a driving distance, it sounds like. Yeah, or even doing things virtually. I mean, I'm not opposed to it. I just feel like, if I were to get to that point, I would need to, you know, have someone mentor me or someone who's doing it and is successful and hopeful. Hope, hope, yeah, it's a different skill set, right? It's another tool. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right. Let's, uh, let's, let's change this up a little bit because you're so much fun to talk to. Why don't, we, <laughs> why don't we talk to your younger self? Let's pretend it's 2012, right? Because you're not in real estate yet. 
I'm just okay. trying to get a timeline, right? <laughs> okay. What, what would you tell your, yourself in 2012? Um, either to start learning or start doing what, what, you know, what would be some words of wisdom you'd want to drop in your ear? Yeah. You know, I, I think about this sometimes and I definitely would tell myself to get into it as soon as possible. Mm. Um, I, I got into it. I was what, 25. So that would have been three years before. Um, I think my mindset just wasn't there. Like I, I, I hadn't come across anyone or anything, you know, I had it, you know, I didn't have anything in, in, in my viewpoint on that. Um, yeah. I think I, I was really limited when it came to mindset. Um, so I would tell myself to just surround myself with people who are successful and, and just do it. Yeah. You know, just jump and do it. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was very much like you, um, except I was 30, uh, before I jumped in and it was the same damn book that rich dad, poor dad book kind of like yeah, that man. Jeez, slap me in right? the face. Yeah. yeah. It's like, what are you doing? Stupid. Like, Oh my God. Yeah. I'm so dumb. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I guess, uh, do you, does one of these tools, cause you have so many now in your tool belt, does one, is one more or less exciting to you? Is it, you know, is wholesaling cause you're in and out in days? Is it flipping cause you can transform this ugly dunkling into a beautiful swan? Is it adding of rentals? I mean, does one kind of light your fire more than the others or you're like even kill the whole way through? Yeah, I, I believe that out of all of them, it's definitely the rentals. Um, and, and I would say it's because of the quality that we provide, like my husband and I. Hmm. So we have this rule where we will not rent a property unless we can live in it. Oh, and wow. As a wholesaler, I see a lot of things. And I'm sure, yeah. Um, wow. Like you sit back and you think, wow, like, why are people living like this? Or why are you allowing people to live like this? You know, it's, yeah. it's actually, you know, I'm getting kind of like emotional just thinking about some of the things that I've seen. And, you know, I have kids too, mm -hmm. and I can't imagine my kids living. And, and I feel like it's a lot of times as people may feel like there's nothing else out there for them, mm -hmm. or, you know, this is the way that it should be. And it shouldn't be that way. And I, I completely understand that yeah, not all tenants are great. Like I've experienced it too, mm -hmm. but, um, we have to provide good quality, you know, yeah. and, and even wholesaler, um, I tell everyone that I, you know, I have a pretty good, good buyers list, but if I find, if I find out that one of my buyers is, is a slumlord, mm -hmm. I do not work with you. Awesome. I do not care how much money you have. I don't, I, I will not. Um, I think we need to start providing better quality to, to our, to our people. Yeah, I, I want to second that. Um, you know, people that follow me know that since I left the workforce, something I've picked up on, it's particularly a passionate for me is I now, ex I do two things, right? I have this buy and hold rentals that I keep adding to just because I can, that's who I am. But the other thing I'm doing, because again, I have time now, right? Because I don't have that day job, is I am buying slumlord properties and averaging fifty to $60,000 on the remodel because I'm disgusted by what yeah. some people are comfortable asking people to live in. That's, yeah. that says more about the landlord than it does the yeah. tenant. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah. uh, I'm glad, I'm glad that uh, you see the world the same way. So uh, I know there's going to be a lot of people that want to talk to you because you're very easy to talk to and all of that. How can people get a hold of you or follow you or, you know, how can you expand your network? Please share how people can get a hold of you or if you'd like. Yeah. So, um, I, my Instagram, I believe it's like MDL underscore one nine nine zero. Um, and my Facebook is Modesta Heredia, H E R E D I A. Um, so yeah. And, and, uh, my email Modesta buys houses, Burks.com. So if there's any, anyone that's, that's looking to kind of just have someone to talk to, at, or they have a question about anything, please email me. I'll be happy to help out. Yeah. And folks, Modesta really means that I've seen the interactions. We scheduled this, I think, 10 days ago. Or so, and I, I always follow my guests that are coming to see how they act. And she, she, you know, she's very authentic in giving back. So Modesta, I want to thank you for your time. Your story is very empowering. Uh, I look forward to the day you announce your retirement or exiting the workforce in a couple of years. That'll be fun. Yeah. We'll bring you back. We'll bring you back on the show. I've already had three or four guests on the day after they retired. So that, that those are fun interviews to have. So yes. uh, I look forward to watching your continued success and have a great day. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye.